Do elephants really weep when they feel sad? Do pigs smile when they are happy? In his thoughtful, well-researched books, vegan author Dr. Jeffrey Mason of New Zealand answers these and countless other questions about the inner lives of animals. Hello, warm-hearted viewers, and welcome to today's episode of Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants, featuring critically acclaimed author Jeffrey Mason, who has written 10 books on the emotional lives of animals. Dr. Mason has appeared on TV shows around the world, including the highly popular Good Morning America and The Oprah Winfrey Show in the U.S. In addition, his books When Elephants Weep and Dogs Never Lie About Love have become international bestsellers. And his latest work, The Face on Your Plate, presents a moving portrayal of the cruel, immoral practice of factory farming. Jeffrey Mousseff Mason holds a doctorate in the ancient Indian language Sanskrit from Harvard University, USA, and is a former professor at the University of Toronto, Canada. After many years of teaching and working in the field of psychoanalysis, Dr. Mason suddenly found himself at a crossroads. I was 40 years old and I had to decide what was I going to do with the rest of my life. I had stopped being a professor, I'd given up my post, I was no longer a Freudian analyst. The question was, what was I going to do with the rest of my life? Jeffrey Mason next discusses how he made the decision to take a new direction in life. I thought I wanted to do something that involved my heart. I wanted to do something that I really cared about. I wanted to think about something that mattered to me and about people I loved. And the people I loved turned out to be animal persons. So I decided to write. Dr. Mason chose to study and write about animals in an area that few had examined before. I wanted to actually investigate the emotional lives of animals. So I first contacted some scientists and apparently there had been very little written except for Darwin in 1872. That was a topic that had been really left alone. So I was eager to explore why was it left alone? What was there to understand? Did animals feel as profoundly as humans? Do they perhaps feel more than humans? How did Dr. Mason learn about the feelings of our animal friends? Well, the biggest help came from animals, for sure. I discovered that if I went to animal sanctuaries, places where animals were safe from being killed, where the people who ran them really loved these animals, and the animals knew that, that you started seeing animals in a different way. His initial work, When Elephants Weep, focused on the inner lives of animals in the wild. Well, for my first book, I actually went to India and I, I went out to visit elephants in the wild. And I quickly learned that wild animals really don't relate to us the way domesticated animals do. And that was fine, but I, I learned that they did have very strong and powerful emotions. Writing the book had a profound effect on the way Dr. Mason viewed animals and life as a whole. I became convinced that if they felt as deeply as we do, and in the case of elephants, for example, they probably feel grief more profoundly than humans, that I could not see any reason why anybody would ever kill such an animal and consume their flesh. It made absolutely no sense to me. It'd be like in killing your, your brother, your mother, your son. So I stopped eating any animals about 15 years ago. So I became a vegetarian. Writing his first book prompted Jeffrey Mason to become a vegetarian. His further research made him rethink his views on all animal-based foods. But it was only when I started doing the research on farm animals and other domesticated animals that I realized that we really had no right, if we cared about the animals as deeply as so many people say they do, we had no right to consume any animal product. So at that point, it looked like I would have to become vegan if I were to be consistent with my principles. In his book, The Pig Who Sang to the Moon, The Emotional World of Farm Animals, Jeffrey Mason delves into the inner feelings of cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, and ducks. Illustrating through a blend of scientific research and real-life stories, 
that animals experience the same complex emotions as humans do. For example, he describes how chickens communicate their love for each other through sounds and gestures. When roosters find something that is delicious to eat, they call their favorite hen, crooning to her in a special voice reserved for just this occasion. The female, in turn, does the same to draw the attention of her chicks to a particular food item. You can see a rooster picking up a choice morsel, then putting it down again, and repeating this until the hen, duly called, takes it from him. Expectant human mothers often communicate love to their babies in the womb, thus forming bonds with their unborn children. But did you know that mother hens do the same? When we return, we'll learn more amazing facts about animals from Dr. Jeffrey Mason. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants and our interview with respected author Jeffrey Mason, a PhD who has written several international best-selling books on the emotional lives of animals. For example, in The Pig Who Sang to the Moon, The Emotional World of Farm Animals, he describes the love between a mother hen and her yet unborn chick. Even before birth, the chick is capable of making sounds both of distress and of pleasure, to which the mother hen reacts. A day or so before hatching, the chick often utters distress peeps. The mother hen then moves her body on the eggs or makes a reassuring call to the embryo, which is followed by a pleasure call on the part of the chick. In other words, the bond between the chicks and the mother hen starts before birth. This makes sense for it allows us to understand why a chick responds immediately after birth only to the calls of his mother. In the following excerpt from the same book, Jeffrey Mason describes his meeting with a delightful pig from New Zealand named Piglet, who lived in a beachfront house with her human companions. She was immaculate, well-mannered, sensitive, intelligent and kind to strangers. She always let you know what she was feeling. Most of the time it was obvious from the smile on her face, especially when she was swimming or playing with her small human friends. But there were more mysterious aspects to her as well. She was sensitive to music and liked to hear the violin played. She especially seemed to enjoy music on the beach at night when there was a full moon. Tony, her guardian, took a picture of her making the sweetest sounds during a night of the full moon, as if she were actually singing to the moon. Based on his remarkable experiences with Piglet and his in-depth research on animal emotions, Jeffrey Mason concluded the following. It is another reason to believe that many animals, pigs foremost among them, may have access to feelings humans have not yet known. Perhaps if we listen carefully enough to the songs that Piglet and her cousins sing at night to the moon, we may yet learn about emotions that could bring us a new and utterly undreamed of delight. Through countless stories, Jeffrey Mason also illustrates that animals can show deep gratitude even to the extent of saving their caregivers' lives. For example, in The Pig Who Sang to the Moon, he tells the fascinating story of Lulu, a 90-kilogram Vietnamese pot-bellied pig from the USA who showed profound love for her human companion by saving her life. Joanne Altsman was in her kitchen one afternoon feeling unwell when Lulu charged out of a doggy door made for a 20-pound dog, scraping her sides raw to the point of drawing blood. Running into the street, Lulu proceeded to draw attention by lying down in the middle of the road until a car stopped. Then she led the driver to her caregiver's house, where Altsman had suffered a heart attack. Altsman was rushed to the hospital 
and the ASPCA, or American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, awarded Lulu a gold medal for her heroism. Altsman knows in her bones that Lulu saved her life. Dr. Mason, who strongly believes that animals are sensitive, loving, and bright beings, shares the following interesting discovery about the intelligence of fish. Another cliche is, well, fish only have a three-second memory, and that's simply not true. I don't know where that originated, but it turns out now that people like Caleb Brown in Australia doing serious research on fish memory come up with at least three months, and it could well be that they remember some things for years. Jeffrey Mason also shares his hope that humanity will make the change towards a more compassionate lifestyle. I think any change that somebody's willing to make, whether they go uh, meatless Monday, as the American Cardiology Association is recommending, once a week, give up meat. That's the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. They're, they're asking that. Anything that people do that's a step away from what they were doing is a good thing and should be recognized and praised and give them information so that they can make an intelligent choice. Dr. Mason has one final request for our esteemed viewers. And I'd like you to do something for me. Be veg, go green, and save the planet. May heaven bless Dr. Jeffrey Mason for his wisdom, diligence, and courage in writing insightful books that enhance our understanding of the complex, profound emotions of animals. As we learn to live in greater peace and harmony, may we always strive to protect and cherish the lives of our remarkable, noble, and loving animal friends. Books by Jeffrey Mason are available at jeffreymason.com. Thank you for your kind presence on Animal World, our co-inhabitants. Coming up next is enlightening entertainment, right after noteworthy news, here on Supreme Master Television. May we all find much inner joy, peace, and happiness. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.